Hi guys and thank you for tuning in again and as you know we've been staying in San Miguel de Allende and our host, hostess Shannon has very graciously agreed to do a little quick interview with us and just on cue her wonderful cat Mocha has just arrived so how perfect Hola, Mocha. is that Mocha has been a uh, lovely he has been keeping us company day and night actually so <laughs> taking care of Paul taking care of Paul when he wasn't so well mm -hmm. and yeah beautiful cat so Shannon thank you again for agreeing to this little mm -hmm. interview and could you share with us before you came to stay in Mexico I take it you visited here a we few did. times my husband and I were living and working in Dallas that's where we met Dallas Texas and we came to San Miguel several times for vacations and stayed between 10 days and two weeks over a period of three or four years. And then when it was time for me to retire, we decided we could live here and uh, it was affordable and we really liked it more than any place we visited in the United States. So we've been here for six years and we've been in this house for a little over five years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so when did you start to actually have guests come and stay here? Uh, we started probably not long after we moved in, maybe, so probably five years, maybe four yeah. and a half, something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, and do you tend, does it, does it fluctuate throughout the year? Do you have more of a certain time of year or, or is yes. it busy stages? Yes. Uh -huh. The heavy season um, is the busy season for San Miguel, which is from about November until April. Mm -hmm. That makes sense for mm -hmm. the snowbirds too. Uh -huh. so the snowbirds from Canada particularly come during that time. And so, you know, the amounts of, of guests that you have and, and um, is there a particular nationality? Do you have more Canadians, more Americans? Do you get plenty of Europeans? We get What's the a lot of Americans and a lot of Canadians. And then for short stays, we get a lot of Mexicans who come for, this has become a very popular spot for weddings. Mm -hmm. And so they'll come for two or three days. And sometimes there are uh, people from the United States that come for weddings. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do get some Europeans. Uh, from Belgium, Croatia, uh, Germany, France. Um, that's all I can think of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Croatia, well, that's... Yeah, we had a yeah. guest from Croatia, which was really great because we were just planning our vacation to Croatia, so she was oh. very helpful to us, oh, wow. um, pointing out things that we'd be interested in. That's a lovely coincidence. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we were here last week, uh, your husband, John Paul's friend, was here with her friend, and, and they were French. And she was telling us she stayed here 30 years ago um, and she loved it and since she came back she's noticed obviously uh, things have changed um, quite a bit in yes. that time so I thought that was interesting hearing that mm -hmm. from her. So that would have been the 90s or, or late 80s and yeah it's expanded tremendously and just in the five years, six years that we've been here um, the population has expanded tremendously in the number of houses and developments and it's growing very rapidly. We've, we've noticed that, you know, um, not just here but, but throughout Mexico we've been touring so far that there is a lot of property development taking place mm -hmm. and um, it's interesting to see that, that more people coming here and, yeah. and settling down here. Um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of Mexicans are build, are interested in weekend getaway houses. So they uh -huh. have houses that they are going to only use for their family when they visit here on weekends or special occasions and um, yeah, yeah, a lot of different uses. But And then there are a lot of people like Canadians who buy houses and they rent them out when they're not here. Mm -hmm. And we noticed we were in Santa Rosa de Lima. Yes. In Guanajuato. Yes. And we noticed that there too our host and hostess, hostess were telling us that most of the time it is Mexican school quality there um, and they're just getting away from the busy cities and they're going there into the nice rural yeah. um, places yeah, to that's relax. a very nice mountain town. Yeah. Very clean area and very quiet. And, yeah, it's very pretty. But we were the first 
Did she say we were the first British yes. first European? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. yeah. It's so close to Guanajuato. Yeah. Hello, Mocha. And this is a beautiful Mocha. A good boy, aren't you? Very friendly. With all these strange people that come to your home. And really, lastly, um, we wanted to ask for any folks that are that are watching expats who are planning to to come and live here. Have you got any top tips, any advice for them? Uh, I think they should be they should visit it several times and, and live and stay here and see if it's right for them because it's um, it is Mexico and it's very different from the United States in a lot of ways. Um, so you have to learn to uh, realize you can't be aggressive with people at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mexican people are very polite mm -hmm. and they they're never aggressive. Um, and if you're trying to get something done, don't push somebody to do it. Just you just ask them, and if they're not willing to do it or if they don't come, then that's just Mexico. Mm -hmm. it basically, be be a polite human being. And <laughs> exactly. There's no room for arrogance anywhere. Mm -hmm. Not here because they. We have met they are a gentle, warm. Mm -hmm. They're very, very kind. Yeah. Light, well. Yes, very kind and and very gentle with their families and mm -hmm. family is very important to them. And, uh, we've enjoyed having our Mexican families on the street here and we've enjoyed uh, interacting with them and getting to know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't think of anything more I could add to that. You know the. The, the weather is, is gorgeous, it's hot. If you're not used to the heat, it can take a little getting used to. But as you shared with me yourself, Shannon, on really hot days, you stay in the shade, you walk in the shade, you do other things. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, if I have to stay indoors for a couple of hours, a couple of times a month of the year, I'd rather do it in a warm country than back in Scotland because I'm forced <laughs> to stay indoors because of the rain. Right, in the cold, the cold weather. For months. Yeah. So, well, there is one difference here in Mexico that we don't have air conditioning and we don't have central heat. Mm. So in the winter, the no, sometimes November, December, and January, the houses are very cold. So that is something that people have to get used to. We mm. just there's just not a lot of uh, insulation in the construction. The houses mm -hmm. are cold, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that works well in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> and the rest of the month. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah. quite pleasant to chill down if you've been out. In the heat. Yeah, walking the around day. and going through the artisan market and all yeah. the different things there are to see here. And that, mm -hmm. you know, that's what attracted us, I think, the most was the beauty of the place, the architecture, the, the beautiful coloured houses, colour. Mm -hmm. colours yeah, colours everywhere. Yeah, colours everywhere, exactly. Yeah. It's quite beautiful. And the food the is really, good. really tasty. Yeah, we're starting yes. to get some really amazing restaurants here. Mm -hmm. But the prices are rising quite rapidly too. Yeah, supply and demand, there's more, yes. more tourists who come. Yeah. 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 It is a beautiful country and we do feel we will definitely come back. Well, good. Well, we've enjoyed having you. And we hope you will come. you looking after us oh, and being good. very gracious and kind. And yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so, so please tell folks uh, watch it if you want to, you know, your address that we will be staying here. Oh yeah, this is Hardin Secreto and we advertise it on Airbnb, TripAdvisor and also on VRBO and we get guests from all three of those sites and um, we're located in Colonia San Antonio which is the largest colonia in San Miguel um, and We'd love to have you stay with us. Uh, my name is Shannon, and my husband's name is Jean-Paul, and he speaks three languages, French, English, and Spanish now, and I'm working on my second language. Fantastic. And if he was here right now, I would say, merci beaucoup, monsieur and madame. Merci à toi. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for making us so welcome and for taking part in this little video diary. Yep. We really appreciate it. Thanks again. It's our pleasure. Thank you. You're our first Scot Scots. Oh, oh thank you. Scots. Hey. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Thank you.
Hi guys, we've just arrived in San Miguel de Allende. We left Santa Rosa de Lima this morning to go to Guanajuato to get the bus and that took an hour. Just over an hour to get to here and we've just arrived. And we are right next to a little hacienda. And this is the street we're staying in for nearly two weeks. And the bus was really comfortable, a really spacious bus inside, you had plenty of leg room. It was lovely actually, um, a much nicer bus than the types we get <laughs> in the UK to do long journeys. Um, yep, so this is the street. So we've got the chickens, we've got the dogs. Just a couple of dogs. And we've now got time. the house. Yep, this is the house. Secret it's called Garden. Secret Jardin Garden. Secreto. It's a purple door. It's a purple door. My favourite colour. And a couple of wee doggies. A couple of wee dogs. Mm -hmm. And here we go. And um, obviously we'll show you guys around the details of this property are online, as is everything we've shown you so far. So you can certainly come and stay here if you want to. And there's no one home just now. We had the code to get in. So we have a little patio area and as you see it leads to our apartment which is called Clara. Clara. What? So I'm trying to go slower with my camera movements now because I realise I've been going kind of fast previously. It's a new camcorder and it takes getting used to. So. This is our living space. We're not sure if that's for us or not. We think that that might even be upstairs. Perhaps even the host and hostess live up there. We're not sure. But we certainly saw this part online and we know this part is definitely for us. Lovely bedroom, spacious, cool. And Paul has just told me that there are hummingbirds, so I am practically besides myself. We haven't saw any yet since we've got to Mexico. And 10 years ago we went to Costa Rica. We did a similar tour. We spent four weeks there. Uh, obviously we're five weeks here in Mexico. But when we went to Costa Rica we found hummingbird parks and oh, it was just bliss. They're in the pink flowers. Seriously? Did you see one? I saw one a minute ago. <gasps> Oh, will probably come back maybe. Sure, my goodness. But in the pink flowers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, that time we went to Costa Rica, that was a decade ago now. And we toured around uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Can you remember all the areas? Oh, <laughs> everywhere basically. Apart from far, far south. Yeah, we really went. We, we, once we got there, we took several flights and went all around. Um, several hummingbird parks and it was awesome. They literally came up and fed from the, the little feeders that you could hold and so they came right up to your face and um, I've never experienced that before and I actually started crying, much to my own surprise. It was beautiful. Some lavender here. So, that's us just arrived. We'll let you know more as things progress. Again, just beautiful tiles everywhere. <laughs> I love that. Lovely windows. We were laughing there. Um, we've got two cases and we haven't actually been on vacation for 
10 years. It was a decade ago when we went to Costa Rica. That was our very last vacation. That's why we are spending five weeks touring Mexico. Um, you, but you forget, when you haven't been somewhere for 10 years, you forget how much to take in a case. <laughs> so I took too much. Paul didn't, but he's a man, he can wear one pair of shoes, but you know, I need a pair of shoes for during the day, I need a pair of shoes for night time, <laughs> so my case is heavier. A couple of murals around the place. <laughs> 